awesome. Love to see it. Hello. Hi, Amy. Love to see him beat the. Hi. I got you on speakerphone. The team with all the. Okay. We're gonna sign in boys. about a minute or so. Oh, okay. okay. No, 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 no. It's. It's asking you just between you and all of us. Um, I know I brought that question up. Are we drafting or are we just assigning? Because I want to know. Okay. Okay. Do you... Okay. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, October 17th meeting of the uh, New Market Town Council. We begin, as always, with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Councillor Burns is not able to be here this evening, so I need to ask her a couple of questions so that she can participate remotely. Uh, Councillor Burns, are you alone in the room? Yes, I am. And could you confirm, please, that you uh, couldn't be here? Yes, I couldn't be there tonight. I am in Bloomington, Indiana, uh, traveling for work. Okay, thank you. Uh, and with that, uh, we move on to a public forum. And, uh, okay. Good evening. I'm Lisa Henderson. I'm a resident of New Market, Six Maple Crest, and I'm also a commissioner with the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. And I wanted to take an opportunity to introduce you to Jen Sizz, the new executive director of Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Um, I'll give you just a little bio of her and then. Um, have her come to the platform here. Uh, she, she and I have known each other for some time. I got to know her when she was with the Office of Energy and Planning, and I worked in um, uh, affordable housing and the field of housing advocacy. And uh, I have known her to be a dedicated public servant who um, 
thrives on challenges uh, and is a great people person and connector. So I was thrilled to hear when she took the position with Stratford Regional Planning Commission. She has 19 years of experience in municipal, regional, and state planning, community development, and architectural design. And as the executive director of the Planning Commission, she manages their daily operations by providing administrative and managerial direction in the areas of policy formation, budget maintenance, staff resource allocation, and the management of complex planning projects. And they are a resource to uh, municipalities. We are one of the, the outliers of the Stratford Reno Regional Planning Commission being located in Rockingham County, but uh, affiliated with the Planning Commission. Uh, and they do important work from uh, uh, local land use programs, technical assistance, uh, and um, so Jen's vast experience as a senior planner with the Office of Energy and Planning and more recently as a regional planner at uh, Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission uh, makes her a terrific uh, find for us here in the Seacoast region. So I will now turn it over to Jen to say hello. Thank you to Lisa. Lisa is one of two commissioners from New Market uh, that represent uh, you all and are appointed by you, the town council. Uh, Peter Nelson uh, is the other representative. He also serves on our executive committee. Um, so I've just been trying to make the rounds and get to all 18 communities in our region. Just an opportunity to say hello, introduce myself, uh, open up a line of communication with, with uh, each of our municipalities and ha take an opportunity to hear what you're working on, what you're interested in, and how we can be best of service to you um, as one of our member communities. Just a really short snapshot of who we are as a Regional Planning Commission. Um, Regional Planning Commissions are formed under state statute. Uh, as such, we have a couple mandated obligations. We prepare a regional comprehensive plan every five years, a housing needs assessment that's designed to help municipalities with their own uh, master plan. Uh, and and then we're also there as a resource for you uh, and the other 17 communities in the region. It gives you an opportunity to network with other municipalities, um, discuss things that might be of common interest to each municipality, challenges you might all be facing, and try and find some solutions collaboratively. Um, we also, as uh, Steve knows, will frequently partner up with our neighboring regional planning commission, so Rockingham Planning Commission. I've um, worked with the director from Rockingham Planning Commission for um, many years. We worked together at National Regional Planning Commission at one point, so um, we have that good working relationship with our neighbors. Um, just kind of some of the things that we've done in the recent past here in Newmarket. Uh, staff have worked on uh, updates to your master plan, uh, have worked on uh, stormwater regulations, which I believe we're, we're going to be working with your uh, planner to kind of bring around to the finish line. Uh, also on the GIS side of things, we've worked on a sea rise project, which was uh, looking at vulnerability assessments in, in the coastal communities. Um, we have a suite of resources online. One of them is MapGeo, a complete set of different uh, GIS data layers that are available across the region. Gives you a chance to zoom in on your community, uh, see different things uh, such as uh, environmental characteristics, transportation, uh, and the like. Um, just a few other kind of big picture things. So, in addition to serving as a regional planning commission, we also serve as a metropolitan planning organization. That is our transportation functions, and that's a federal designation. Um, Colin is our senior transportation planner, and I think I'll let, give him the podium in a little bit just to say hi um, and mention a few things that he's working on right now in the transportation realm. And just want to kind of wrap things up on my side by saying the Regional Planning Commission, it's your commissioners. So having Lisa and Peter, is uh, they are the ones that set policy, set direction for the commission. And we really rely on them. Um, they also double as our Metropolitan Planning Organization's policy committee, uh, which means when we're looking at transportation projects, they're the ones voting to send things up to the Department of Transportation for what our regional transportation project priorities are. Um, and on that end, I'll just kind of put in a plug for our meeting Friday morning, which is our policy committee, 9 a.m. We have the DOT commissioner coming to speak on what she's working on for this upcoming year and what she's putting together in her budget proposal uh, for the Department of Transportation. So that's a great opportunity uh, to get that one-on-one -on -one FaceTime with the commissioner. Uh, and 
have Where? your community's priorities heard directly. I'm sorry, where is that? It is at our offices in, in Rochester, 150 okay. Wakefield Street. So I think with that, I'll just give Colin a quick second just to, to say hello and just mention what, what we're working on in the transportation world. Thanks, Jen. Nice to meet everyone. My name is Colin Lentz. I'm the senior transportation planner. I've been with SRPC for a little over five years and in the transportation realm for a little over four. Um, so I'll, I'll keep this as, as brief as I can. There are a number of transportation funding programs that can take care of various projects that might want to get, that new market folks might want to get done if it's addressing a safety issue on public roads. There, there are funding programs for that. Um, and I can go into more detail if you get in contact with me. Um, the one, the big thing in, in the state of New Hampshire is the state's 10-year plan that gets reorganized, uh, re-updated every two years. Um, the regional planning commissions play a role in uh, projects moving their way up into the state's 10-year plan and eventually getting federally funded. Um, so we'll be working on that over the next few months. I've been working with our communities on projects, but related to the, the policy committee, as Jen mentioned, uh, over the next few months, what I'm going to be working with the policy committee on is a set of sort of policy directions or issues um, that the local communities face and that have sort of a regional perspective. And so we make sure that those get to the decision makers at the local, regional, state, or even federal level. Um, so as, as Jen said, the, the representatives of our 18 municipalities are the one that they, they run the show. And federal, federal legislation says that it's the 18 municipalities, not the staff that are the, the transportation side of things. So I want to hear from the communities and make sure that those, uh, those needs get to the, the folks that make, uh, make the big funding decisions and, and policy and legal decisions and so forth. So I'll leave it at that. And um, Jen's going to leave cards. And uh, we're a very small office. So call and ask for either of us. And uh, we're there all the time. So thank you. Uh, can counselors make comments? Would anybody have any questions or comments at this point? I mean, you were looking for a little bit of interaction, I think. I have a comment. Sure. <laughs> it's very timely that you're here yes. because later on, um, I was going to bring up some correspondence that I've received from some of our residents here in Newmarket about some safety concerns, particularly around um, the, the school building project and <coughs> the, the safety of our residents mostly our children mm -hmm. who are crossing 108 and there's been a lot of back and forth with the, the Department of Transportation and a couple of parents okay. so um, I can forward some of that information to you guys I Please. can't make the, the Friday meeting unfortunately but um, I'll definitely forward that information and um, yeah if it's an email it's chain and yeah it maybe hopefully is sometimes just a matter of talking to the right person whether it's the district or mm -hmm. you know whether it's putting a crosswalk in the right place or could be yeah. as cheap as just signage or a light or there were a lot of um a lot of things i, I ju it just just came to my attention today yeah. um and there were a lot of alternatives that were that kind of went back and forth yeah. so i don't know where the project stands at the moment where the, where the crosswalk issue okay. stands obviously the school project is happening but the fact that there's construction and lots of people crossing the street mm -hmm. a busy road it's 152 mm -hmm. um, okay, and so yes. there's some some real safety concerns around pick up and drop off so I'll pass that along of course. thank you yeah I, well I just say that on my years on the council I've uh, I've had a chance to see how important your services are to the community so I, I think we've I'm sure we don't use them as much as possible, but we use them a lot, and I think we have a, uh, a good relationship with the Planning Commission. And I, I think we're the kind of the big project is there is another go at our master plan now under discussion. We we started meeting, having a standing joint meeting of this town council and and planning board every year, so that we can sort of you know ident you know come to an alignment on what what the priorities for the coming year and that was one of the things we discussed at that meeting in September so mm -hmm. so thank you for all you do thank you I'll, go ahead I'll second that because I was on the stormwater subcommittee uh, from the planning board and yes. that was very positive experience <laughs> so for me you know it was very clear and helpful to have some of the models and, and help with that so 
Thank you. Um, I did. I don't know if this applies with transportation. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. And we haven't really talked too much about it as a as as a council. It hasn't really come up. But um, I have noticed a lot of people commenting on traffic. You know, he heaviness of traffic mm -hmm. starting to really flow through downtown Newmarket, and then of course that. Uh, exacerbates safety issues because people are trying to it's usually through commuting and they just want to get home <laughs> so yeah. yeah I was I was just coming to Jen my my commute is a mile I live a mile from the office in Rochester so I always feel a little guilty when I actually have to drive somewhere and it's commuting times and I realize how much of a rat race it really is um, but so there there are programs for congestion reduction so we can be we're in a position to help design a project with you know maybe multiple communities, including New Market. Um, and so that would be, a, a, and it would come with a request for making that funding available at the state level as well. So mm -hmm. um, feel free to reach out um, and if there, you know, we can figure out what the scope of the congestion issue is um, and, and see what alternatives are out there. Yeah, I, I think the big thing we see, we've, we've talked about it a little bit internally and we've just come off with it because for some time New Market was going to try to put a, a <coughs> bike lane but the, the funding we had with, did not make it, right. you know, make sense. So you, what you find now is that north of Newmarket on 108, we're, we're seeing a major improvement in the roadway through there, and that we're still seeing the end of that, that construction. South of town on 108 mm -hmm. is a heavy traffic area as well, and there's, there's really, it's, it's hairy as heck for bikers, and nothing much has happened down there, and nor is it, I don't know how much it's on the radar of the, but it, it can't, you know, it, as, as we can see continued growth in traffic and, and development, I, I don't think it can stay off forever. I just kind of mentioned kind of two things in connection. Um, we do regular traffic counts throughout the region uh, with the standard set of locations, and so we might have traffic count data, and that we return to the same location every so many years. So we might have that trend data already available for some of those locations where you're noticing uh, increased traffic. If it's not one of our regular count locations, we can send a staff team out and do municipal reports, uh, on any of your local roads or state roads, um, except for you know, the big scary ones. Um, <laughs> we stay off of 16. Um, <laughs> and then on the uh, bicycle uh, safety, we have a project coming up uh, that's going to be looking at bicycle level of stress on roadways in the communities. It's just, it's a, it's a performance metric tool where you can look at and compare different roads and what the perceived uh, level of safety is on various roadways. It's an interesting tool, one way to visualize. Through, through various circumstances, I, I'm forgetting the designation of, of the various highways in, in the general area here, but we're getting more access to data specifically about congestion, so not just a traffic count, but where the congestion is happening, so we may be able to zero in on some of those some of those areas in specific times of the day. Yeah, so. and sort of some of the hot point on that is it gets into, because Newfields is Rockingham yes. Regional, and it's, it's, it's that stretch, mm -hmm. so it's, it's the interest, you know, between the two where, and, and all of the bridges the, are tough, there's no room for bicycles, but they're bicycled on and that on those railroad bridges at the south end of Newmarket. So I think it's an area to be. If I had to name where in our town, I thought the the area that to look at. I mean, I I went to the last time there was a ten year year, year meeting here in Newmarket. I was impressed that it can take a long time to come up through the process. So on that basis, we should probably start building a case because <laughs> it's going to be scary what it's like in a few years. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I just going to say that, you know, we did try to work on the bike path with the state. However, um, we have a bad taste in our mouth dealing with DOT and we probably will not manage any projects with them anytime soon. Uh, when we end up in court over who's going to pay, it's not a good thing. So. Right now, if, if the state wants to do a project, that's fine. It just you know, we would not be working with them at this point in time. Yeah, but I, I think in, that's a little different in, in terms of monitoring traffic yeah. and trying to understand, because at some point, 
you, you're, you're going to have to have needed to do all that background. But by the time you probably get to the point where the project gets done, hopefully the suit and everything else will be long forgotten. So, anyways, thank you very much. Motion to approve the October 3rd, 2018 meeting minutes, please. So moved. Second. And uh, are, there, are there any corrections or comments about the minutes out there? I have a couple. So w the first one is a just a comment. Uh, not, not that there is any error here, but I... On the section where MS4 is discussed, I, I did want to just touch on that a little bit because um, it, it says that in our appeal, we're, he that said that the towns that are uh, that appealed the MS4 permit process, that the intervening towns, right, in the in the appeals process, yeah, that we. Those towns disagree with the EPA about what nit nitrogen levels were appropriate for Great Bay. That's partially one of the parts. That's one of the things, yeah. yeah. And, I, and, and I said at that time, and I'll repeat now, that I think that when we voted about it, we talked very little bit about disagreeing about the science of nitrogen. What we talked about is the town council that voted on it was that the timing of it was very tough because of the way it followed the election and that to preserve our options, we were we were willing to enter into this appeal process, but uh, there's so much. Um, from my opinion, this is speaking in my opinion, why I'm a little sensitive about this. I think there's a lot of challenging good science that's going on at all levels of go government here, and I'm not at all sure that we uh, that I ever understood what our basis. I'm you know from what I've been to and what I've heard, I think the science around nitrogen and its impact on estuaries is is pretty well established. So um, so I, that, I just wanted to make that comment about not not that there's an error in the minutes, but that I, I think it, it, it's not, it doesn't fully come out where I was coming from when I made the comment that I made. And then there are uh, a couple of other things that I have on, let's see, page four, line 124, page four of the overall uh, minutes. Um, I think where it says Chairman Pike stated that the planning board had set up the subcommittee for the McAllen Dam, and, and I, I don't think that's what I said. It's certainly not anything that happened. What happened? The, the subcommittee that was set up by the planning board was uh, for looking at, um, you know, that was looking at uh, some of our uh, proposed. Uh, land use and some of the uh, some we we're Mine specifically board. reviewing some of the uh, recommendations of the economic development committee that would be one item that the that subcommittee was around and I, and the reason I was it was brought up at that time was just that we were talking about when it's when when would you set up a subcommittee but it, but it wasn't around the McAllen Dam and the last thing I have on the minutes is page six and let's see if I can six and that's line 215 on page six and um, he purchased yeah when it just a, it's a it changes the meaning a little bit but it's really just removal of three letters the letters where it said he said that he also purchased composting for his yard. I, what I purchased was compost, no ing. So, and that's the only changes I had. Um, 
Did we we did have a motion, right? So okay, I get lost in space here. Um, please call the roll. Council Burns. Abstain. Council Finch. Aye. Council Dumont. Aye. Council Cast. Aye. Council Bowden. Abstain. Council Weinstein. Aye. Council Pike. Aye. Motion passes five zero to two. Okay, we move on now to a presentation on the 2020 budget. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Monday, I presented the Town Council pursuant to the Town Charter uh, my proposed budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020. Uh, I've got a PowerPoint presentation to go over some of the uh, highlights of the budget, and then on October 27th is a all-day workshop to really get into the meat and bones of the budget. First item I always like to do is show some economic indicators for our area, uh, and one of them is the consumer price index and where, where it is right now. Uh, not surprisingly, the consumer price index has been going up. The United States last year was up 1.7%, now it's up 2.9%. In the Northeast, it was 1.6%, and now it's up 2.7%. In the Boston area, which we're part of, it was up 2.2% last year, and now it's increased by 3.4%. What the consumer price index shows is what it uh, what what it costs for people to purchase the normal things like oil and food and what and this is showing what the increase in cost is for the individual. So the cost of living has gone up 3.4 percent in Boston area. The next is the economic uh, unemployment rates. The United States last year was 4.3 percent. Now it's down to 4.1. The state is at 2.5 and it's up to 2.7, which is minimal. Uh, 2.7 for the county and 3 this year for the county. The Portsmouth Metro, which you're a member of, was 2.5 last year, and now it's at 2.4. And for the town itself, it was 1.9%, and uh, this year it's at 2.1. However, those percentages are actually negligible. Anything basically below a 3, that could be just a, a blip of somebody, be, you know, seasonal employees or part-time employees um, switching. So it's not, it's almost no unemployment. The next one is an estimate for what our current tax rate would be when we set it this fall. Uh, this number is an estimate. I just want to make it, we have not set the tax rate yet. Um, we're estimating the tax rate this year will be $29.26. The biggest part of the tax rate, as always, is the school portion. So roughly about 74% of all the tax dollars goes to fund the uh, school. The next portion at 20, about 22% is the town, and then finally the uh, contribution to the county is at 3.8%. And this is just a comparison, a five-year comparison of the tax rate. If, as you can see, pretty much the town is put in pretty level here, between uh, $6 and uh, this year will be the highest at $6.41. Uh, the reason for the jump in the school, this is the first year bond payment, uh, complete payment for the new uh, school renovations. But the other thing is, is that the assessed value of the town has also increased this year. We're estimating it'd be a $762,100,100. What does this mean? It means for every dollar that we raise in tax, uh, every dollar in the tax rate, we can raise $762,100. Last year we were able to raise $757,803. This will be the last year of seeing a rate around here because we will be doing our statistical update in the coming year. Every five years we have to do the, what we commonly refer to as a revaluation. Every five, year, five years by state constitution we have to do that, and this is our fifth year. Thousand or million? Million. Okay. The value is I million. thought you said thousand. Okay. Million, million is the value, thousand is how much we raise by each dollar. So. The proposed fiscal year budget, uh, I am proposing a budget of $12,222,871 or an increase of 0.68%. The department's proposed a budget of $12,897,704 or 6.23%. And the current budget is $12,140 or $40,734. Um, <laughs> My budget increase is proposed at $82,137. Enterprise funds will be decreased by $108,096, and all other funds will be an increase of $190,233. The 
the general fund, I'm proposing a budget of $7,864,846. Uh, the special revenue funds, which is the library, recreation revolving, and solid waste, I'm recommending a budget of $1,201,083. In enterprise funds, I'm leaving a $3,156,942. The enterprise fund is water and sewer since they're self-funding. Um, just that that's paid for through rate payers, not through tax dollars. And where's the increase going? Uh, $30,000 is for economic development uh, consultant, $124,125 the first year of the police contract, and $22,000 uh, is for solid waste contract, and $27,000 is for the recycling contract. So why is there such a difference between mine and the department head budget? Contribution to capital reserves. I'm recommending $550,400. They were requesting $1,097,525. The reasoning behind the uh, reduction in capital reserves is that we've also had a, re uh, a reduction in our, our surplus, our fund balance. We're currently at $2.4 million. The council budgeted $850,000 to be withdrawn from that to fund capital projects last year, which places at five one. Million five hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars. We are not anticipating a huge difference in revenues from what we we've, we've been budgeting to actuals. So our revenues are pretty right on, as well as our expenditures have not been that big of a gap. So we're only anticipating about two hundred fifty thousand dollars to go back into the fund balance. At one point five nine uh, one point five million, we're at five point seven percent. Our bottom is five percent. We sh our policy is between 5 and 10 percent. I'm cutting capital con contribution to capital reserves because this won't impact the operation, the day-to-day -day operation of the government. It's going to impact projects, but not uh, any services that we provide on a day-to-day -day basis. So as you can see, the, they requested for public works $195,360. Uh, I'm funding that at $75,000. Building improvement is requesting $35,222. I'm proposing 15,000. Uh, roadway improvement asked 260. I've said 250. <coughs> Stormwater management I did uh, propose 25,000. McAllen Dam is 50,000. Fire department request 159,000. 80 dollars. I, I propose 50,000. Police vehicles at 47,500 dollars. I propose 26,000. Uh, police dispatches at 25,470. I propose 10,000. The Veteran Memorial, I've level funded at 2000 Master Plan at 10000 uh, The 300th Anniversary Celebration Expendable Trust at 2000 <coughs> uh, Compensated Absences, uh, I'm recommending 10000 We're having a number of retirements coming up that we're going to have to start paying for compensated absences. The Library requested 155890 I'm recommending 10400 to be contributed to the capital reserve. Recreation requested $120,003. I recommended 15000 so mine will be a decrease over last year's of 32.8%, 30, about 0.8%. And here you can see the difference in the revenue budget. Uh, total last year we estimated at 7,437,656. This year we're anticipating 7,089,248 uh, in revenue. So not too far off, but it's still uh, a dip. Uh, yeah. And again, that's, that's only because of the fund balance. It's not anything else. We're seeing motor vehicle registrations coming in fine, building permits are coming in fine, everything's coming in fine. It's just we've been budgeting to actuals. We, we knew this was coming. We, we've seen this in the past few years. So the next slide is an estimate only using data as we have today. Again, this is an estimate. I always give this warning before I give this one. It's the tax impact of the, if the budget were to pass. Uh, as we said, I'm recommending a gross appropriation of $12,222,871. You less the revenues and then add overlay, which is for abatements, and then add our war service credits in that $160,000. So the net town appropriation would be $5,313,623. And you take that by the assessed value, and it would be the tax rate would be six dollars and ninety-seven cents, or an increase of fifty-six cents. 
There are two potential bonds in the impact. Actually, that's not, there's one error on that side. It's not $87 annually. Um, the McAllen Dam, we're estimating the cost of that project at this point in time at $1.5 million. By getting a bond schedule, it was five cents in the first year. So if, if the bond were to pass this March, it would be five cents. And then the second year, it would be an 18 cent impact. It's a 20 year bond. And water projects, that, um, that would be going on the rate not on the tax rate, so that would be a separate issue. That would be a, just a different uh, additional revenue on that side. And that is all I have. And just a reminder that, again, the workshop is on uh, October 27th. Any comments on the, uh, on the presentation? <coughs> um, I know that we're going to go through obviously go through all the numbers, but just one thing that stuck out to me was if we are have the potential to have a bond for the McAllen Dam, mm -hmm. why are we putting, why are we contributing to the capital reserve also? We still need to have some money in there for engineering. There's still some projects wrapping up. I can double check to see why, but You know, look what you know. We don't have to have comments, but look at your last couple of sentences on page four of your report, talking about the CPI. Mm -hmm. I, that, that didn't make sense to me. The main reason for the reduction or small increase in the CPI is due to the falling oil prices in the area. There should be there should be an increase. Um, the increase, the rate of increase is actually in, is, is to some extent accelerating yeah. according yeah, to yeah, the numbers. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, that was there's an error there. My day to be picky, I guess. But uh, all right, uh, and uh, department reports. Do we? I don't know. Oh, I think there was one. I don't know if we make corrections on that or not. Mm -hmm. These are just their reports. Yeah, we'll have some. It, there was something that were. I think. Let me just find that there because I. I, I want to make sure I've got it right. And understand it correctly, but um, come on, yeah, Mr. Department. Uh, <clears throat> the are, uh, just one second. I think it's uh, the clerk. I think she just put the wrong date hmm. down. It should be through six thirty eighteen and not nine thirty eighteen. And it's on page 35. Okay. Oops. A problem repeating the car. It's crashing on me. Sorry about that. Well, that's okay. If you have to look at that sometime, I think that. The only thing on there says. Now, everything is till the, the September 30th on her report. Right, but isn't the, the number she's citing, isn't that? I don't know it. The fiscal year, right? No, she's. Then maybe I didn't understand it right. If I could get this thing to load up right. The, she, doesn't, she hasn't changed the report. I mean, it's the same report she does every month. Okay. I guess I better not spin the numbers too fast. Okay, so that the water and sewer are on a different different they're not on a fiscal year are they on a calendar year no they're, they're with us but that's all that's what they've collected from January 1st okay I'm not sure what I was saying then I'll okay. taxes total collected through 930 again it's that's that's correct yeah then. okay yeah all right good sorry about that's that all righty then moving on 
do uh, so we, we're, we're going to continue to leave um, resolution 2018-19-10 on the table committee. oh committee reports I'm sorry thank you do we have committee reports I have one okay uh, conservation commission met last Thursday um, <coughs> just a couple points to, to bring up uh, one thing we discussed was uh, Chanda Park um, and I kind of went back mentioning that the commission could form a subcommittee after our discussion last time and the commission's uh, agreed to kind of reach out to the town to see if there might make sense for the town to kind of look into helping run or facilitate maintenance on that because it's a lot of it's a it's used as a essentially a town park it's different than conservation land so we're going to find that there's some way that the town can uh, help uh, help out with that upcoming project that will be down the road for maintenance repair oversight um, we also talked about we'll be uh, beginning surveys of some of the local conservation areas and the other thing we discussed was or that came up actually um, there's gonna be a volunteer cleanup day at Heron Point Sanctuary on Saturday October 27th same day as our budget meeting from 9 a.m. until noon um, so members of the community have already kind of uh, they've got some numbers ready to go we're gonna open up the gate and then DPW is gonna help with hauling away some of the debris that's down there so in anticipation of the gate being installed uh, once we hear back from Eversource which I believe should be happening soon I just haven't got a recent update on that and that's it okay any other committee reports <coughs> yes. bless you no seeing none all right we move on to um, amended resolution 2018-19-10 and as I understand it we're like leaving that on the table yep so for that no vote is required nope. and um, there are no nominations appointments or elections so we move on to uh, the resolution 2018-19-11 we we'll begin with a request to suspend the rules to act on the motion this evening. Would you like to explain that? Yeah, um, well, two things. One, I think because of the length of the resolution, you don't need to read the entire thing. It's just, um, second, we are using impact fees, and I do not like suspending the rules. I'm going to tell you that right now. But if we do not use these impact fees, we lose them. And department heads should know that they need to come forward beforehand. But I do not want to turn these impact fees back for equipment that we desperately need. So I'm requesting that the council suspend the rule to act on resolution 2018-2019-11 this evening. So I'm look, seeking a motion to suspend the rules, please. Make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. And uh, is there anybody that wants to make a comment or a question about this? Seeing none, please call the roll. Council Burns. Aye. Councilor Finch. Aye. Councilor Dumont. Aye. Councilor Cass. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Mm -hmm. Motion passes 7 0. And the recreation director is here. Yes, do we. Uh, we motion to approve. We, for, first, we need a motion to approve, please. This is 2018 19 11, use of recreation fee, impact fees. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2018 11. And we don't need to read the whole thing, just the title only? I, I would, just because of the length. Yeah. Do you need a second? Yeah, need a second. I'll second. Okay. So the the title of this is, I'll read that and the, the sub subtitle of it, so to speak. The resolution is the use of impact fees for specific swing swing set upgrades. And, a, and then below that it says release a portion of collected impact fees from the recreation account to purchase two new basket swing like set apparatus structures and two new toddler parent swings and with that um, Amy do you want to uh, make comments at this point yeah. um, there is a swing set project um, we had put in the um, CIP plan for several years ago to redo the swings if you're familiar with the swings at the Leo Landruff there they're very old they were built in the 1970s and 
in order for them to bring up to code, you're only allowed to have two swings per bay. Um, right now, those swings have three swings per bay. So just to do an entire replacement of the swings, we would lose uh, total capacity of how many kids could swing. So in looking at that and using impact fees, we're actually looking at some swing-like apparatuses that are very current and um, um, in, in today, Dover just um, puts them in their town park. Um, and they are able to carry several children at once. They're baskets, and it's great for social play. Um, it's great for children with special needs. It has a, uh, the type of motion. Um, they are also ADA um, accessible, whereas a regular swing isn't. So um, in the notes, we're, by using these swings, and they're a little bit more expensive than the traditional swings, um, that's why we're seeking to use um, impact fees, because of the demand of how many children are at the park, especially during summer camp, um, we need more swings. And to take away swings by doing a straight replacement, we, we would lose a lot of swings. So um, what's going on with what's being paid for these impact fees? Currently, the capacity of swings is 10, 10 children, whereas with these new types of swings, um, the toddler swing actually allows the parent and the child to swing at the same time, or a sibling and a child. So in that case, you increase it. So the impact fees would actually be increasing swing capacity to 23 children um, instead of 10. <coughs> okay. okay, any questions regarding this? I'll just comment. I saw <laughs> those swings when I went on the, the CIP tour last year. So yeah, they're not in the greatest Pretty. shape. So this this is specific equipment that will go with the full um, retrofit of the swing. So it's not the entire project. It's just the equipment the, that will increase capacity mm -hmm. per impact use requirements. Okay. And and is it also you you included quotes as well, right? So yes. you pick mm -hmm. you pick somebody a lowest bidder to. Uh, it actually didn't come as the lowest mm -hmm. bidder. It was um, about six hundred dollars of difference, um, and it came down to the type of swings. I mean, you're dealing with different vendors. Every swing's a little bit different, um, and their toddler swing, um, the one that came in at the lowest quote, um, was an older model of the toddler swing, and the middle um, quote. Which came in at um, twenty two nine nine five, and the other one was twenty two three three zero twenty two thousand. Um, was it different? It was actually um, a brand new model, just rolled out at uh, nationals this past September. Um, definitely has a larger seat, more comfortable for an older generation. We often see grandparents taking their grandkids to the park more comfortable for the toddler, just a better quality of swing, and also that particular um, vendor, uh, New England Recreation Group, um, they're local, so service-wise, we would be able to get better service, whereas the lowest uh, vendor, their uh, distributor is in New Jersey, and they were slow to respond to a lot of my email requests, so that is why um, we're recommending the, the middle quote of 22,900. Okay. Uh, I just have a couple comments. So I'm definitely in support of improving the equipment on the playground. I think it's I think it's due. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad to see that that's going to be happening. And just to comment on um, or on some of Steve's comments earlier. I mean the impact fees aren't a surprise to us. So I know we get a report. We get a report every month, and, mm -hmm. and I know that that's out there. So um, I do think that just for planning purposes, as we move forward, making sure we have our eyes on that in the future, is would be. Um, it, there, there was supposed to be done in April, but the school and the so it just. Sorry about that. No, I hear you, but. <laughs> um, okay. Any other comments? Questions? Please call the roll. Council Burns. Aye. Council Finch. Aye. Council Dumont. Aye. Council Cast. Aye. Council Bowden. Aye. Council Weinstein. Aye. Council Pike. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a question.
question mm -hmm. about the previous resolution. Mm -hmm. At our meeting, and I went back and just to look at the minutes quick, we didn't put it on, we didn't lay it on the table. No, I noticed that on the agenda as well. It's on third reading, so it's not on the table. But you can hold it up over again. So do we do, does that require a vote? No, not? you're fine. It would, okay. It's just, it's a scrivener's error. Okay. Okay. okay um, and these are, the rest are just reading, and i got to figure it out. i got to read it. Sure, go ahead. Resolution 2017-2018-12, authorization to purchase a Ford F-150 pickup, whereas Auto Excellence recommends the sewer truck number 37 be replaced, and whereas the water department set aside $31,260 in the capital reserve account for number truck number 37's replacement, and whereas the trucks are scheduled to replace every 12 years, and whereas truck number 37 has been in the fleet for 13, and whereas the water department has followed the purchasing policy and received state bid with, uh, from Caproni Ford, now, therefore, be it resolved by the New Market County Council that it here does hereby authorize the withdrawal of $27,913 from the water capital reserve funds and the purchase of a, of a new Ford one, F-150 pickup from Pony Ford not to exceed $27,913. Okay. And uh, the last resolution to be read I have here is the resolution 2017-18-13, a preliminary engineering contract for the Macintosh and Tucker Well treatment project, whereas the Water Department has performed a water build-out study that has identified the town needs to increase its water supply, and whereas the Water Department has created a 20-year capital improvement plan, and whereas the Water Department has been approved for a $3,900,000 loan with 25 percent forgiveness from the New Hampshire Drinking Water and Groundwater Trust Fund. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Newmarket Town Council, does hereby approve the withdrawal of $504,596.96 from the Water Capital Reserve Funds and $27,403.04 from water impact fees for the Macintosh and Tucker Well Treatment Project. The New Market Town Council approves the town administrator to enter into an agreement with Wright Pierce to perform the Macintosh and Tucker Well project preliminary engineering for the sum of $532,000. And so, are there is, now we touched on it before, there is correspondence to the town council. Do you want to? Make any further comment to that, or I does do. anybody? Go ahead. No, I, I, let me just find it. Sorry, I didn't have up, but anybody else has anything before? I... Anybody else have any uh, anything to say about correspondence to the town council? Okay. And we'll wait patiently. Right. No so I alluded to it earlier. Um, I was forwarded um, a series of emails from um, a parent, and I had also, at the same time today, earlier, uh, received a couple emails from another parent about the safety of the crosswalk in front of the, um, the junior senior high school um, that crosses 152. And I can speak just on a personal note that I am also, I'm often driving past there at um, drop-off time, and it's chaos. It's, it's dangerous. Um, I've witnessed that, my husband's witnessed that, and that's what the people who have sent these emails have witnessed. Um, they took out the flashing lights, and um, there's often a crossing guard. Sometimes that crossing guard is distracted. Um, and it's not, and that crossing guard isn't always there. Kids are walking across the street. It's just, it, it, and there's a lot of traffic and kids, and there's so much more foot traffic because the kids, because the, the student drivers can't park at the school. So they're parking over on Maple Crest and they're parking, you know, in all these other spots. So there's just a lot more congestion and it's a lot for a driver. Um, to keep your eye on early in the morning, you know, at 7.30 before you've had your coffee. So, mm. and now that, you know, it's getting dark and there's after school activities and all of that drop off activity is happening across the street. And so kids are, you know, constantly walking back and forth. 
I think that it causes it, it has the potential to be a huge um, liability for the town. Now I know that it's not our project. It's not the school. I mean, it's not the town's project, but safety ultimately comes back to the town. Um, it's also not a town road. It's a state road. So it's a, it's just kind of a mess. Um, so I wanted to bring it to the council's attention. Um, I know that you're aware of the issue, Steve. I could address it. Sure. Yeah, this has been going on probably about two years ever since we installed the original lights. Um, we knew that when they opened up the art classroom across the street, we worked with the school, we installed the beacon that you could hit and cross the, the uh, street. At the time of getting the second driveway permit, the State Department of Transportation District 6, which is, covers us, uh, indicated that, that those lights were not permissible and forced us to remove them. We vehemently opposed that. I mean, we think it just doesn't make sense. Um, they came back with an answer that the op options are that we have to have uniform traffic control devices throughout that area, which would mean potentially installing the same kind of lights at Pond Street, Maple Crest, Maple Street, Packers Falls, and Grant Road, where they're not needed because there's no pedestrian traffic in those areas or they're cul-de-sacs. I could tell you that it's probably about fifteen, ten to fifteen thousand dollars for one of those to put in. Um, we're still working with the state to try to get that one back in. Um, the chief of police is going to co contact the Department of Transportation. My other suggestion is, at this point, you're, you're right, it's a state road, so we'd have no control over the re regulations there. Uh, we would be contacting the state reps as well. The state representatives are the ones who can get probably get through the DOT better than we can at this point. Um, yeah, because I mean, I can tell you that we, we completely agree with the, the parents, that we do believe that a, a beacon is needed there. We still have one that we can put back in, but we need the state to give us permission to do so. But it's their road. We can't. We have to follow their guidelines. Uh, I don't know whether we're discussing other options right now, or you're going to... I, yeah, I don't think at this point. I mean, I, at this point, I, the, the the option is to put that in. I mean, I, I think the crossing guard. You're right. It's it's not always. It the, plus still in the middle of the day when students are crossing the street <coughs> to go to the art class. We still think that there should be something there to warn drivers that they're coming through. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to get back that light at this point. So what's the interim? So is what is with this current situation? Is what's going on? We can't put anything in there. So the schools providing co crossing guides at the busiest times, and other than that, that's where we are. It's not our hands are tied by the state. It's a state road. We get no authority to do anything else there. I will say, I think that, and I and again, I want to put this out there, just because I, I think that I need to. But this was a project, and, and this is not, again, I, I recognize this has nothing to do with the town council um, or town administration, but the, this project didn't just appear. <laughs> and, and we are now October 17th and well into the school year, mm -hmm. and the situation isn't, hasn't been... <clears throat> There isn't much of a res of a resolution for the for the problem, and I really do fear that um, it has the potential for someone really getting hurt. Again, like I drive that uh, often in the morning, and it's it's dangerous, and I and I, I'm concerned about um, the safety of our kids. So. Hey, it's Councillor uh, Burns. Can I jump in for? Just a second, I don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> um, but I, I do agree with everything that's said, and, and Steve, I, I completely hear you that this is a um, you know, a state road and we have to abide by those guidelines. Um, I don't know what else we could look into, but, but one huge concern that I have is not only in the morning, but those after school programs where now it's getting dark. Mm -hmm. and picking up the kids across the street and having them cross the street without any kind of a 
you know, flashing light. It's just a concern. So I don't know what other things we might be able to look at or work with the school board or the uh, superintendent to see just if there's anything we can do to just make it safer. Yeah, and I, I echo all the concerns I've heard because I, especially in the evening, um, the visibility there is actually kind of tricky just because of how narrow everything is through that area. So I totally uh, sympathize with all the emails that have been forwarded to us and would hope that the state would allow could us we, to. Could we, in the, in the near term, for something to try to get some, get past the impasse here, could, uh, could, could our representatives help us maybe reach out to Martha Fuller Clark and see if we can get a meeting between the DOD? Oh, we're meeting with them. I don't, I don't want to think that no, we're No, I want it's, a public meeting where the parents can be there. Uh, yeah, I think the schools should set something up with the state rep saying, we, like I said, we're willing to, to install it. Right. And I, the chief of police can express his concern for safety there. Right. But, so I get, get all yeah. of the parties sitting in the same room, have a conversation about this, and, and people can sort of... If anybody's being unreasonable, they will at least show us that they are being unreasonable. And I, I think you know, people can dumb, make dumb, dumb question. Yeah. I'm full of them. Um, where is the, I guess the, the property line for where it's yeah, the towns it doesn't, it doesn't versus? Matter. Yeah, you mean putting it on our property versus? Yeah. It doesn't matter, it's still crossing the state law road. So I'm not going to try and solution. I'm just going to, uh, what I think I would like to see is for interim until, you know, mm -hmm. uh, something can be addressed more formally with the state and come to some resolution there on a permanent solution that's really workable. Um, I think we should try to, you know, get focused and creative about some interim solutions. So can we put, you know, a cruiser there to... There is. Uh, yeah, there's a cruiser there. Okay, or can we do... But it's not 24 hours. I, I'm just going to list a couple yeah. things to show, like, can we brainstorm some more? <laughs> these are not... We, we don't need to discuss these options. I'm just going to say I've thought of that. Yep. I thought of... I've heard of these um, these techniques where you give people who are crossing the street something highly visible that they pick up as they Lines. before they cross, yep. and they put it in a bucket after they cross yep. so that it just makes... You know, whether it's a flashing tube or... Uh, something reflective, whatever, right? Just to make each individual crossing. Uh, can we, there's something else I thought about, <laughs> I totally forgot. But that's, my point is, can we try to be be more, just try try a little harder to come up with something? Well, first new? of all, we are trying hard. I don't, uh, okay. I don't want that out there. The Thank police you. chief is working extremely hard on this okay. with the public works director. Okay. So we are trying hard. I, I apologize if that came off as like, Okay. Words. Second of all, I mean, we're just getting this the same time as everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we're we're trying to work with the superintendent. Some of the things that they're re recommending, like we didn't get the suggestions that the state gave to this individual. We weren't, the, the staff wasn't forwarded on all these emails. So we're getting them as, they're forwarded to us, the people who are actually going to be doing this. One is to put more street lights at the area of the crosswalks. We can do that. That's not a, a big deal. We're, that's not, that's easy. Um, yeah, the flags, we could do that. I don't know how long they'll last. <laughs> um, <coughs> from knowing somebody who lived in a college town, they had them and there was a bunch of flags in their <laughs> room. They don't always last. Um, but we are looking at, the, you know, we're trying to figure out what we can do. So it's, it's just, we're, we're, we are brainstorming on our level. Thank you. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll definitely forward this exchange to all of our state reps yeah. and to Senator Fuller Clark. Um, and, you know, yeah. hey, see if they're able to do anything. This is just the continuation of our frustration of our, our main streets being a state road. We can't govern our own roads because the state comes in and does stuff like this. Um, it happened, we knew everybody who's been here for the Main Street project knew the nightmares we went through there. It happened with the Exeter Road projects that do those state roads and they come in and they change, the, they follow their rules that are most of the time do not make sense for the local government. It's a cookie cutter rule for the state. And it does make this like for this is a perfect example of one that makes no sense. It's a crosswalk to get from a parking lot to a school building, not a not an intersection, not a uh, 
a heavily tra- well, not a heavily intersection like um, 152 and Main Street and Exeter Road. We're just trying to get kids and pedestrians safely from a parking lot to the building. And we, and the, you know, we're, we're still working with them to do that, but it's again, this is the cookie cutter rules of the state coming down and not making sense at the local level. I know you said we can't do, um, say, traffic control signage, but what about those giant orange signs that we use for information, like the hydrant flustering, the voting day? Couldn't even put one of those up in the parking lot, just saying, watch out for children? We could. I mean, it, the it's problem not with, controlling the, traffic, yeah, the problem but with it's those, though, huge. The problem with those, though, is that people become snow blind. Mm. After they drive by that many times, they just don't read it any longer. That's a fair so, point. That's why you, the strobe, mm-hmm. you don't see it until it comes on. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why we thought that was the best. Well, I, I think those Correct. strobes are Incidental. wonderful lights, and I think yeah. they're effective on our main street. So I would. They're very effective. I, I would I would say that is, there are a lot of other solutions that we can, you know, we're not going to solve this tomorrow. So some of the other things could be done quicker. But I still like the opportunity to try to make the political system work and involve. We have highly supportive local representatives and, and Martha Fulcock. I mean, I think these are people that have really looked for opportunities where they can serve the community. And I think this is an example of something where a little political pressure is probably appropriate just to make sure that we're all communicating in the best way we can and to find solutions. Because the solution seems to be there, it just we need to get through this stuff. Where right. I mean, the, the solution was there, and right. Right. Well, I'm not, I'm not, well, yes. but not to beat a dead horse here, but um, when they put in those lights, it was to cross the street for uh, uh, for the art class, and this is really a different situation. But, I mean, if you yeah. drive through there at 7:30 in the morning, it's very different than just some kids crossing the road. It's it's like, you know, when you when you drive down downtown and there's people backing out, and there's people going across the street, and you kind of, you have to have your eyes everywhere. That's what it's like. And so, but with a lot of teenagers. <laughs> and, right. and so, <laughs> I, it, just, it just heightens the safety. Um, but I, I would assume, not, not to get too far into something that other people are working on, but I assume that crossing guards can be quite helpful when it is at its, when the heaviest volumes are going on. But the other part of the problem is that there's a whole lot. You can't have a crossing guard there from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. the whole time. Right. Well, and right. you also, I, I mean, and, and this is no offense to anyone, but when the crossing guard is the principal of the high school, it's easy to get pulled into conversations. It's not a crossing guard. You uh, know, like, I, I mean, it's just, uh, and that's no mm-hmm. fault of the principal, but he's the principal. And so... People it's have used that opportunity to, to message. To go, hey, you know, yeah, hey, mister, you know. Yeah, no, I and so that. I think that that's, um, you know, it might, it would maybe be a better idea to have a, a parent volunteer or, a reti- you know, to have someone else be the crossing guard. And I'm, uh, that's. Right. I well, I think all of these things should be, uh, you know, encourage. But I, I think we. I think if we want if we want to get that light back, for at let, least we should, we let should. us do our stuff and we'll okay. come to the council and give an update. Okay. Well, while you, I guess while you do your stuff, I, mean, I guess that's to echo Councilor Weinstein and the comment about people volunteering during certain hours. I know how difficult it is for to get coaches to volunteer. But if it has something to do with safety of the children, then maybe people will, or parents, grandparents, whomever would volunteer to, to stay and work to cross the guard. It's tough to do it all day, but it could be a like, interim solution. Okay. So do we have any closing comments by town councilors? Uh, just a reminder that the Heron Point Sanctuary uh, cleanup will be Saturday, October 27th from 9 to 12. Um, the gate will be open, so there will be a little bit of parking down there to, for anybody who wants to volunteer and help out. Yes. 
Uh, working with uh, Kristen Picelli. Sorry for the butchering of the last name. In regards to getting the Candidates Night together. So, hoping to get information back on that very soon. It's important. Great. Thank you. Seeing no other comments, uh, I think we've covered the agenda. Agenda. Our next meeting is uh, November 17th. And uh, with that, we, uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much.